Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Day Reviews today. Mm-mm. Makes me thirsty looking at that. Let's go see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Got a special treat here. I was able to pick up, pick this up uh, when I went for the last little beer run. I went to get uh, my go-to beers, uh, but I found a couple of different beers uh, that I had not done, so I picked them up too over Kroger's. And uh, like I said, when I reviewed uh, the Smokestack series of the Boulevard beers, which I had not seen here, they are here now. This is the double wide and the great big 750 milliliter with the cork top like a wine bottle it's got. And I did, I want to do a, a, an update on the uh, Tank 7 beer that I did. It had all the floaties and junk in the bottom of the bottle there. I looked, uh, they had them at, uh, at Kroger's when I was there and I looked up the fresh bottles sitting there in the store shelf that probably hadn't been there more than a week or so. And they all had the stuff in the bottom of the bottle, so that, that, that is supposed to be there evidently, because the new bottles have that in there, so uh, that, that may, may be a little on the, uh, the rookie side of what I'm uh, reviewing, because I wasn't expecting all that in the bottle, so evidently it's supposed to be there, so that's my ignorance ev evidently, so I'm just still not a big fan of having all that stuff in uh, in those type of beers unless like I said unless it's a an unfiltered beer or a wheat beer or something that you're wanting to get that all that stuff in there so evidently from the time they put it in the bottle until it gets to the shelf all that stuff has settled out so I don't think it's in the if you was at the end of the bottling line I don't think you would see all that stuff in the bottom of the bottle that's just my opinion now guys so let's get on with this one this is the double wide IPA from Boulevard in the huge bottle here in 750 milliliter and it's got a bunch of writing on the back. It says, uh, Double White IPA, the classic India Pale Ale, is a traveler's beer, aggressive hop, to withstand the long, hot ocean voyage to the British West Indies. West Indies. Our Double IP, Double White IPA, on the other hand, is more at home on the amber waves of the American plains, while this modern-day prairie schooner may not resemble a graceful sailing sloop. Our liberal hopping regimen does make her virtually twister proof. Keep some in the cell to enjoy it while waiting for the, the all clear to sound. Alright guys, this is an 8.5% ABV beer and I can't tell if there's any, any stuff in the bottom of the bottle. It's just so cloudy uh, in the bottle. This bottle, there are, these the bigger bottles are a little darker than the regular bottles. So I really can't see into the bottle. It's almost like looking into a, a bottle of Stouter or a Porter that uh, that uh, you can't see through or can't see into. So let's get on with this one. Uh, the commercial description Double Wild IPA uses Columbus and Magnum hops for both bittering and aroma with Chinook hops added in the whirlpool. It is dry hop with generous amounts of Cascade, Centennial, and Chinook hops. The resulting beer is a hop forward aroma <clears throat> redolent of peach and apricot. The assertive flavor bursts with the citrus qualities of blood orange and lemon with slight caramel malt backbone to balance the intense hot flavor. There is little restraint in the flavor of this beer. It is certainly not for the pedestrian palate. So, unless you're a seasoned IPA drinker, maybe they're saying this is going to be a little too hoppy for you. We're about to find out. So, of course, I am a seasoned drinker. I've been drinking beer all my life, but only into craft ales for about the last five years or so, guys. So, I had experimented earlier, like I told you on one of the reviews. Back in the 80s and, and 90s, I was drinking some Killians and, and Bass and, and several others imported beers when we went up to uh, the Ton 80 Club in Black, Blacksburg. They had all that stuff, over 200 imported beers in stock. So I did experiment in my younger days, but now I'm exclusively into craft ales. So I don't drink a lot of the macro I don't drink any of the macro lagers, to be honest with you. I just don't support them guys anymore support the local and the craft beer industry. That's just me, that's just that's just the way I am. That's just that's just my that's just my opinion though. I mean if you enjoy sessioning those uh, fizzy yellow water beers, 
more power to you. You can have my share. That's what I say. All right, guys. On with this one. It says here, American Double Imperial IPA, 8.5%. The food pack for this is your uh, cuisine is barbecue, the cheese of pepper, Monterey, pepper jack, sharp blue, cheddar. Your more pungent cheeses, gorgonzola, Limburger go with this. The meat is game, grilled meat, and salmon. And the glassware is a snifter, tulip oversized wine glass. I'm, I probably ought to get the uh, tulip glass at an eight and a half, but I'm not going to. I'm going to pour it into the pint glass here today, guys. So this is a great big bottle here, too. So without further ado, it says uh, it can be selling for longer periods, but just remember it is an IPA. Even though it's a double, unless it's super boozy, you're going to lose some of that hot profile. So. Hopefully this won't gush out, out, out over everything like one of our previous cork models have done. And like I said, sometimes I can twist these corks out of there and sometimes I gotta get the pliers. Oh, I got it to move. Alright, we're gonna get lucky. Maybe, if it don't explode. Right, nice smoke, no gushing. That's a good thing. Into the glass. We better ease up. We're going to have a monster head. And we still have a monster head. Let me get that around so you can see it. With that a pour, we got a two finger of head on this one, guys. Let's get it over into the light. Alright, over into the light, it is a rich amber color, just like the one we did yesterday. Uh, a lot of bubbles streaming up. It looks very well carbonated with the evidence of that big pour on the head. <laughs> Looks really good in the glass. I can't see the bulb through it though. I mean, it's not cloudy or anything. And I don't see any junk in this part of the, of the beer. So when we pour the other half, pour the other half, we'll, I'll let you know whether it, 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 it turns cloudy or anything or if there's any crap in the bottle when I come back. So let's get a nose on this one. Not getting a super hot aroma with this. Not as much as I was expecting. I'm getting citruses. Citruses. Is that a word? Citrusy, lemony, or orangey in this. A little bit of grapefruit or even pineapple or something like that. A lighter fruit. It does have a sweet smell to it though. There may be some pears or apples or something in there too. Not getting in the alcohol through the, the head on this, and it's dissipating pretty quick. We're down to just a little over a finger of head, and it is very creamy on top. So let's give it a hit, see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Wow. Very easy drinking. Wow. No alcohol presence whatsoever to me now. Wow. This is this is so easy drinking. You could session this. And by God, you'd get in trouble if you sessioned a bunch of these. Wow, that is so easy drinking. Very well made beer. Very balanced. Not a super hot forward profile, but it's pretty good. Very easy drinking. Citrus, for the hops they've used, I was really expecting more hops in the nose and in the taste. But it's not hop forward in the, either in the malt or the hops. Very well balanced. If I did not know this was a double IPA, I would not believe it. Well, it is very, very well hidden. Well, I'll drink half of it there in front of you. Very tasty. Well, wow. probably one of the more balanced double IPAs. 
without all the hop forwardness. I mean, it's not super piney or super grapefruity or, or, or super anything. It's, yeah, it's super balanced, that's what it is. The malt and the hops are working very well together. This could get you into trouble. Wow. I'm almost blown away just from the balance of the beer. Mm. Excuse me. Wow. Awesome. Very awesome. Guys, it's right out of the free. It's a great big bottle. I'm going to share the other half of this with her. See what she thinks of it. I drank too much too fast. Now i got the burps. Wow. Awesome beer so far, guys. Stick around. I'll be right back. I'm going to do the final chug on this one. Pretty impressed so far. Alright guys, I'm back. Got just a little bit left here. Boy, this one will get you in trouble if you weren't careful. If you didn't know, this was a 8.5% ABV beer. You wouldn't know it. I mean, if you were drinking this on draft somewhere and did not know the ABV and had three or four of these, you would be in serious trouble. Unless you're a seasoned drinker or somebody that the alcohol doesn't affect that much. But if you're not, it will get you into trouble, guys. Very well balanced beer. Not super hoppy forward, so if you're looking for something with a, a super hop presence, this is not it. If you're looking for a very balanced beer with the hop profile and the malt uh, profile being pretty close to the same, very sessionable, very easy drinking as far as that goes, not knowing the ABV, yes. So, very well made beer. And I'm going to pour the other half of the bottle in, and I, and I did add a little bit to mine, and it clouded it up just a little bit. So, the bottom of the bottle is going to have a little more cloudiness, so if you're pouring this into a great big glass, uh, it's going to be a little cloudier than what you've seen here. So, not extremely cloudy, but uh, enough to notice the difference in her glass and my glass. So, with that being said, let's do the final chug. Very tasty. Nice floral, piney, citrusy taste of this beer. Not over hop forward. Especially with the hops that they used in this. I mean, I was expecting it to be a little hoppier than what it is, but it's not. Very well balanced, guys. And uh, I don't think it is dated. May be mistaken, but I do not see anything stamped on the bottle here. And there's definitely nothing printed on the label as far as dating. So you would have to be careful there. Oh, shut my mouth. Right here in the corner, batch number and best buy date. 3 2014 is the best buy date on this one. So, I mean, we're in September here. So this is being a double, they're, they're, they're saying to have it before March 2014. I'm glad I got it this early. Like I said, it's pretty fresh to our area. So I'm pretty sure they're not sending us old, older beers from some warehouse somewhere. This is a fairly fresh beer. And uh, it's very tasty. Uh, it's, and like I said, uh, if you're into cellaring some of the bigger IPAs, which I don't do a lot of, I've got a bunch of hop slams out there because I was able to come across a bunch of them. And uh, got them at a really, really good reduced rate. But uh, I've also had one of my subscribers saying, Oh, I see all those hop slams. That's a shame. They're way past their prime. To be honest about it, I think they're tastier now than they were in January when they put in a bottle. For some reason, the last two years have not impressed me that much as they did three years ago. Three years ago, I thought it was a real awesome beer. But it has such a cult following, like a lot of the beers do, that as soon as they put it out, I mean, everybody just tries to buy up everything that they can get their hands on. And that's why a lot of the stores put a limit on what you can get. And you can only get one or two, or, or if you're lucky, a six-pack of it. Other than that, I mean, they all disappear, disappear off the shelf. And, but even still, a lot of the people like those beers. They, they say, oh, it's the best thing they've ever had. Well, if you've never had it before, it may be the best thing. But having some of the older stuff and, and knowing it, that it tastes a little bit different than what the newer ones taste. Now, I've even got some comments back on the Zukov from Cigar City this year's batch is not as good as what has previously been. So 
Dennis uh, is supposed to bring me uh, two bottles of the 2013 edition of that. Now, I've got some 2012s in the closet. I may even do a side-by-side -side review of uh, last year's and this year's, so we'll see how that goes. Let's get on with this review, though. Double wide IPA, definitely worth picking up, guys. I've not been disappointed with Boulevard beers so far, so I'm glad they're in this area and glad I get my hands on them. And I don't have to have somebody ship them to me or trade them to me now, so... Yeah, very tasty beer. Uh... I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna give this an eight, which is an A minus. Definitely an A beer in my book. Definitely worth picking up. Uh, it's worth a try. Let's go to the ratings over here. Beer Advocate says it's 89, which is in their very good range. I agree with that. It was a very good beer. And Rate Beer says it is 99 overall and 94 in the style. So I may be a little lacking on my ratings if they're that good through Rate Beer. But I'm going to stick to what I say. I could easily give this one a 9. But we're going to stick with the 8 on this one, guys. Uh, I think it's a very well-balanced beer. And that's the biggest thing going for this beer. It's not super hot forward and it's not super malty. There's a great balance between both of those. Which makes it a very easy drinking beer. Like I said, which will get you into trouble. Alright, guys. Uh, if you've had this beer, give me some comments back on this one. Whether you liked it, didn't like the double wide IPA. Uh, I thought it was a damn awesome beer, so you may see me, well, I don't know, I won't be re-reviewing it, but you may see more of these in the fridge. So, with that being said, rate, comment, subscribe, give me your comments back if you've had it. As always, we're going to check that fridge tomorrow. Hope you can join me then. See you, everybody.